ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you our singing star, Miss Kitty Reed. Hello world, this is Miss Kitty Reed, and today on Amish Book Club we will be discussing The Reckoning by Beverly Lewis. This is the third and final book in the Heritage of Lancaster County series, which includes The Shunning and The Confession. It was published in 1998 by Bethany House. My assistant today is the lovely Kirsten. We meet up again with Catherine Mayfield, trying her best to adjust to life as a wealthy Englisher. Her first boyfriend, Daniel, had faked his death years ago and now is trying to track down his beloved. He arrives at Catherine's mansion but is turned away, thought to be looking for the imposter Katie used to try to steal money in the previous book. Meanwhile, Catherine has her maid write a letter to Mary so she can still contact her friend without breaking the shunning rules. Mary and Bishop John are starting to form a relationship. Mary has wanted this for some time but feels guilty over taking the man her shunned best friend was about to marry. But Catherine has her own romantic interest, artist Justin Worth, who takes her to beautiful locations for dinner and dates. Daniel tries again to find Catherine and the two finally see each other. She is confused and angry and tells Daniel to leave before he can explain much of what happened. Catherine and Daniel are left confused and hurt, unsure of how to move on. Inspired by the care her mother received while she was dying, Catherine volunteers at a hospice, becoming close to a young boy named Willie. She also teaches a quilting class at her home and makes friends with a local Amish family. Back in Hickory Hollow, Mary and Bishop John go on a moonlit buggy ride. He proposes and Mary joyfully agrees. Mary gets the bishop to lift part of the shunning, so now at least Catherine can communicate with her loved ones. Ella May, the wise woman, falls ill. Ella May speaks of her regrets in life with Mennonite relative Lydia Miller. Years ago, she and her husband met with Mennonites and became born-again Christians. However, they did not leave the Amish church as they would have been shunned. Ella May decided then that she would do what she could to help people within the Amish church, but regrets not openly sharing Jesus with others. Catherine is experiencing her own religious journey as well. She has been thinking about her spirituality in light of her mother's strong faith and in Daniel's letters urging her to find Christ. She goes with some of the servants to church and is moved. She goes home and reads the Bible. Soon after this, Willie, the boy from the hospice, dies. Daniel goes back to Hickory Hollow and meets the nephew that was named for him. Catherine goes to church on Easter with her boyfriend Justin, who she suspects will propose soon. Mary and Bishop John are married. Catherine gets a letter from Ella May, summoning her back so the wise woman can see her before she dies. Ella May talks to Catherine about religion, and Catherine asks her to lead her to Jesus. Ella May guides Catherine to say the sinner's prayer and accept Jesus to become saved. She then goes to visit Mary, and the next day they meet at an island on a lake in Catherine's parents' property. Mary gives her more details about why Daniel left. Catherine tries to talk about her newfound faith with Mary, but Mary believes, as the Amish do, that one cannot know they are saved and rather must trust God and live a good life to get to heaven. Catherine also goes to meet with her mother at Lydia Miller's house. While taking a walk, Catherine runs into Daniel, who is overjoyed at her conversion and will soon be moving to the area to start his own drafting business. They reconnect and talk of old times. Daniel wants her back, but Catherine says she will soon be married to Justin. Back at her mansion, Catherine finds her mother's journals from when she was pregnant. Her mother had wanted her baby to grow up surrounded by love, peace, a stable family, and a life that will be filled with work and play. Catherine realizes that she was meant to be plain. She donates the mansion so the hospice can expand. Then, reverting back to being called Katie, she comes to Daniel's house and tells him to take her home to Hickory Hollow. Katie becomes a Mennonite, as Daniel is, and is married in her hometown. Her mother sneaks into the wedding to congratulate her. Katie and Daniel are now happy and together as they were always meant to be. The end. This book was okay, I guess, but as in so many trilogies, the third installment is the weakest, and this series is certainly no exception. The Shining was so good on so many levels, and this isn't. So much of this book is just filler and fluff. Honestly, the second and third books could have been condensed into one. However, we don't get details on interesting plot points. The book ends right after Katie and Daniel get married. 
We should have gotten more with them because for them being soulmates, we get almost no scenes where they're together. I had to reread repetitive dates with Justin and the quilting class scenes, but I don't get Katie and Daniel scenes very much. That was a letdown, especially because they had so much chemistry. We also don't get a lot of scenes between Mary and Bishop John, but I'm somewhat glad for that. Mary being married to creepy Bishop John is her happy ending? We must remember that Mary is 20 years younger than him, and it was alluded to in the first book that Bishop John was just lonely and wanted a pretty young wife and had no real love for Katie. Also, marrying the man who issued the most severe shunning in memory to your best friend would be a little awkward. Mary was the sweetest person. Why should she be with the person who was so cruel in the first book? This brings up another point. This book does not seem like it was written by the same person who wrote the first one. The style is off and many layers and nuances of the first book are absent here. This is because this book is a heaping helping of evangelical belief shoved down your throat. I'm not opposed to an explicitly religious story. In fact, there are many I find very enjoyable, but the charm and intrigue of the shunning has given way to a story with the sole purpose of seeing Katie get saved in a way that does not feel meaningful and basically preaches to the reader again and again. The whole part with Ella May being born again seems forced and I doubt the first book was written with this ending in mind. Ella May represented independent thought and women forging their own path but now she's just a stock character to get Katie to convert. And it felt wrong that Katie talks about being happy to wear a head covering for God and Daniel now that she became a Mennonite when the head covering was a symbol of oppression in the first book and taking it off was a powerful act of liberation. Katie, who wanted the freedom to live a life of her choosing, is back to living as she was, but with evangelical beliefs. It was depressing to see that. We're just so beat over the head with these evangelical talking points. It was so unnatural, so like a low-budget Christian movie. And if you didn't know anything about the Amish before reading this book, you would be excused for thinking they were a pagan tribe who worshipped pond scum or something. The author talks about the Amish like they aren't Christians. Katie's religious training in childhood is called indoctrination. Mary is said to not be open to Katie's beliefs because of fear. The Amish characters sometimes seem stunned that God wants to be involved in a person's life as if that wasn't the whole point of Jesus coming to earth. It's really weird and honestly pretentious to say over and over again that the Amish aren't Christians. Look, theological debates aside, the Amish are Christians. They believe in the triune God. They believe that Jesus Christ died for our sins and opened heaven for us. They believe the Bible is God's word. Even if you have many disagreements with them, you can't say the Amish are not part of Christianity. You would have thought Katie was converting from, say, Hinduism to Christianity, not changing denominations. I will give this book a 3 out of 7. This book was okay, but such a disappointment when compared to The Shunning. But you kind of have to read it to see how things turn out. Next month we will have our Christmas in July special on Amish Book Club. Our next book will be An Amish Christmas, a collection of three novellas written by Kathleen Fuller, Beth Wiseman, and Barbara Cameron. Please check with your local library to see if they have it on the shelves. If not, I am sure they would be happy to get it for you through interlibrary loan. Kirsten would like to remind all of you out there on the Information Superhighway to leave your opinions in the comments and look at the video description for important links. This has been Amish Book Club with Miss Kitty Reed. This is Miss Kitty Reed and Kirsten. Signing off. See you later on Amish Book Club.